Hello everyone, today we will be talking about one of the important processes involved in chemical engineering, which is solid liquid extraction, and what are the industrial applications of solid liquid extraction. Before we go into the topic, let's take a look at what chemical engineering is all about. What is chemical engineering? Chemical engineering creatively combines the principles of chemistry, biology, physics, and mathematics to solve problems that involve the production or the use of chemicals, fuels, drugs, food, and many other products. Chemical engineering study involves a basic part of chemistry like general chemistry, organic chemistry, and inorganic chemistry, as well as the physics behind the reactions such as thermodynamics and fluid dynamics. In fact, chemistry only plays a small part in chemical engineering, while physics and mathematics are the main contributors. With such knowledge, a chemical engineering graduate can decide various paths in the industry, such as processing, manufacturing, and process safety. Normally, chemists in the lab will do experiments to find out the reaction to produce the desired product. Meanwhile, chemical engineers will take the experiment, the process, and the procedure to produce it on a larger scale. In short, chemical engineering has to do with originality and scale. They use the materials and process them to an industrial scale while ensuring the processes are in high efficiency. After getting to know what chemical engineering is all about, let's talk about solid liquid extraction. Solid liquid extraction, or we call it as leaching, in short can be defined as the process of extracting a substance from a solid material that has come into contact with the liquid. To achieve the fastest and most complete solid extraction possible, the solvent must have a large exchange surface and short diffusion path. This can be done by reducing the solid to be extracted into very fine particles. However, we need to take note of the process because an excessively small grain size can cause agglutination, which is the clumping of the particles. This condition will definitely make it more difficult for the solvent to permeate. The simplest form of this unit operation is that the extraction material and the solvent are well mixed followed by the removal and regeneration of the solvent and the dissolved transition component. You might wonder how it works. Solid liquid extraction is actually practiced in our daily life as well. A good example of it is making a cup of tea. In this case, the tea leaves act as the solid, the hot water is the liquid or we call it as solvent, and the tea flavor is a substance to be extracted. The soluble particles, which is the tea flavor, dissolve in the hot water, leaving the insoluble tea leaves in the cup. Or, it can be simplified as a process of contact, separate, and extract. Contact with hot water, separate with the tea leaves, and we extract the tea flavors. Now, you might have the general idea of solid liquid extraction. So, we will go into industrial examples. In industrial applications, the solvent is normally regenerated using evaporation or distillation method. The solvent is evaporated and a concentrated extract solution is left behind as the product. The solvent is then condensed and can be reused. Before we go into details, let's take a look at what are the factors that will affect the extraction rate in the leaching process. The four important factors are particle size, temperature, concentration of reagent, and stirring which is referring to the agitation of the fluid. These four factors are taken into account to ensure the maximum efficiency of the leaching outcome. The complete extraction process can be divided into three main steps. First, preparation of solvent. Second, extraction process. And lastly, pre-concentration of the extract. The final purification of the extract is usually done downstream from the solid liquid extraction unit. Leaching is actually widely used. Many industries greatly benefit from leaching applications. For example, biological and food processing industries, pharmaceutical and most importantly, metal processing industries to remove the desired metals from their ores. 
Examples for leaching in food industries are the separation of sugar from sugar beds with hot water, extraction of oil from peanuts, soybeans, and sunflower seeds. Likewise, pharmaceutical products are obtained by leaching plant roots, leaves, and stems. Now, we will look detailedly into some applications. Firstly, extraction of vegetable oil from soybeans. Before the soybeans are extracted, they need to undergo the process of dehulling, cleaning, cracking, and flacking. The flacking of soybeans speeds up the extraction process where it breaks down the cell walls of soybeans, which allows the solvent to come into direct contact with the oil. For an ideal leaching of soybeans, the soybeans need to have a high oil solubility to minimize the amount of solvent and a high volatility to recover the solvent. The soybeans also need to be non-flammable, low in toxins, and compatible with the materials being used. Therefore, N-hexane is normally used as it has a low toxicity, but it is still flammable. Next, we look into gold leaching. Cyanide leaching is used to remove metal impurities and preserve desirable products, such as gold, because cyanide is a naturally occurring chemical where it can be found in nuts, plants, insects, and fruits. At the same time, it is little to no harm to the environment. Cyanide is used in gold leaching because it escalates the extraction of gold from the ore. Gold extraction process is very simple and is performed in minimal stages. First, crush the ore. Second, perform pH tests to increase pH to the slurry by adding lime or other alkaline to ensure that no toxic chemicals are being produced with the cyanide ions. Third, concentrating and reducing the gold. This step then evolves the sample into a gold bullion or smelter. The process is then pushed through a recycle stream to refine the gold being separated. There are various types of leaching methods, each has its pros and cons. And one of the most traditional leaching is called in situ leaching. For in situ leaching, the leaching holes are drilled directly into the deposit and the solvent is pumped through them, reaching the ores. In agriculture, leaching is an important balance in preventing soil accumulation and removing nutrients from soil. If the soils are too dry, the salts will accumulate in the top horizons of the soil, which in turn affects the growth of plants. These soils suffer from the accumulation of salts due to the limited leaching. On the other hand, excessive leaching can flush nutrients from the soil, especially nitrate and phosphate, causing plant nutrition deficiency. This is all for solid liquid extraction. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something out of it. Thank you.